Hi everybody, this is Kwabana from OpenMV, and today I'm going to be showing off our new global shutter imaging sensor on the OpenMV Cam H7. So in our last video, we described how we, we were going to support lepton imaging sensors and also global shutter imaging sensors. So we finally got global shutter operation working on the OpenMV Cam H7. Um, and so this is the sensor quality. As you can see, we can see this church outside easily. It's got a very, very nice um, ability to actually see outdoors in the daylight, unlike the uh, OV7725. Um, and you can also see indoors too. So as you can see, the image quality is quite smooth. Um, shot noise in general is heavily reduced because we're using a, a much better analog circuitry now to uh, actually read out the field of view. Um, things look sharp. This included with the new JPEG compression hardware on the OpenMV Cam H7 means you're going to have great images to look at now. All right, so by default, the system is able to run at about 80 FPS. That's really fast, but we can go even faster. So if we set the resolution to 160 by 120, you're going to get some unreal performance. 200 FPS, no problem. So in general, in order to get these kind of performance benchmarks, you're going to need to reduce the exposure time on the camera. Notice how it's only exposing for 47 lines. This is explicitly because we're pointing it outside. In particular, the sunlight is doing the most of the job here. Um, the global shutter imaging sensor doesn't have, well it, ha well, it has a high dynamic range, but it's not going to be able to uh, give you 200 FPS at the same time as being able to switch between outdoors and indoors. For example, notice how the frame rate just took a dive. Now we're only getting about 71 FPS. This is because uh, we're pointing the camera indoors and it no longer has the benefit of a lot of sunlight, so it has to expose for longer. But once we take it back outside, we're back up to 200 FPS. So with global shutter imaging sensors, you're going to have a lot of variability on your frame rate based on how much lighting you're putting in your environment. So it's really key to control that. If you want to use the global shutter imaging sensor inside, you need to make sure that you have a lot of lighting on the subject you're looking at so that you can get that high FPS. Otherwise, use the camera outdoors and it'll really shine for robotic applications. But 200 FPS, we're not done yet. We can go higher. So if we reduce the resolution down to 80 by 60, now we're going to be able to achieve 350 FPS. Amazing. How is that possible? So the global shutter imaging sensor is really a, a uh, quite simple analog device. It doesn't really have any uh, digital sensor ISP processors or anything on that. It just kind of takes pictures and exposes the number of lines um, for as long as you set the register settings for. Um, because with uh, OpenMV IDE you have direct register access to the sensor, you can actually go download the uh, data sheet for the part and um, control it even more than our default setup is for. But whatever the case, by default right out of the box you're going to be able to get these insane FPS frame rates. Now, what about actually processing the image? So let's do some blob tracking at the uh, QQVGA resolution. So right off the bat, as long as our exposure time is kept low, we're able to achieve 100 FPS. So if you're trying to use this guy outdoors for a robotic application, you're going to crush the competition of having the fastest FPS around. What about indoors? It's going to slow down a bit. Now it's only going to go about 71 FPS or so. Still, that's really great. Additionally, um, the image quality is much better than you'd normally get with the OV7725. Now, what if we shrunk the resolution more? Can we still go faster? Yes, we can. So if we go down to uh, 80 by 60, now we're able to achieve uh, color blob tracking at 300 FPS. Again, as long as we're staring outside and we have plenty of uh, light to keep the image exposed, it's able to go quite fast. Um, so note that you can set the, uh, you can turn off automatic uh, exposure control. And when you do this, you can force the frame rate to be a particular value. Of course, you will have to deal with, uh, then again, applying the correct lighting if you do force the frame rate to not be not variable. Um, what about uh, things like optical flow? So this is uh, one of the big things a previous product called the uh, PX4 Flow did that previously used this sensor. It was able to do optical flow for um, quadcopters. And so now we can kind of replace that whole activity. We're able to achieve optical flow. Uh, oh, this image is quite hard to look at, but um, this is the standard optical flow using uh, phase correlation. So it's taking um, FFTs per row and then per column of uh, the previous image and the current image and then comparing the uh, pixel differences. And we're able to achieve about 180 FPS on that um, using 32 by 32 pixels. Um, that's quite good. Um, 
for this kind of application. Note that the uh, um, doing differential translation, all that it needs are all, all that it needs to see in the image are um, some type of edges or something like that, and then it's able to precisely tell you how many pixels you moved. Um, anyway, uh, if you raise the resolution up a little bit, we're still able to hit some great numbers. So we can do that at around 70 or 80 FPS uh, differential translation for a 64 by 64 pixel window. And so again, this is a quite robust algorithm to uh, things moving around in the image. If you were to strap this, excuse me, onto a quadcopter, you'd be able to easily track your uh, movement if the camera was uh, pointing down at the ground from about 400 feet up in the air or something like that. Anyway, that's the uh, new uh, global shutter imaging sensor for the OpenMVCam uh, H7. Uh, we will be, uh, I'll be demonstrating a uh, color performance for it later on. Um, the sensor is mostly uh, best used for grayscale applications, um, which pretty much covers everything besides uh, color blob tracking. But um, it additionally also includes a uh, Bayer pattern imager on here. So when you set the resolution to VGA or higher or RGB 565, you'll be able to actually get color images out of it. Um, right now, it's just doing grayscale because uh, we set binning on for 320 by 240 or below, and that pretty much uh, turns the image back into grayscale for really high performance. If you try to use this sensor for uh, color, it's the performance is just going to be around 40 FPS or so just because the uh, binning has to be disabled, and it'll just kind of act like a uh, regular camera sensor then. Anyway, that's all, folks. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.